Welcome to Faith and Freedom. For the next few minutes, we hope to inform, inspire, and encourage you as we discuss legal victories and challenges to your fundamental freedom and religious liberties. Faith and Freedom comes to you from Liberty Council, a civil liberties education and legal defense organization. Join us now as Matt Staver, founder and chairman of Liberty Council, explains the latest legal issues all across this country. In the courtrooms of America, Liberty Council is winning the battle for your constitutional freedom. Israel is a topic in the news we hear about often, but it's not often you get a chance to talk to someone who is from Israel that sees it firsthand and that actually was born in Israel. And my guest today is Samuel Smadja. Samuel was born in Israel, and he's a great friend of mine and a friend of Liberty Council. So welcome to Faith and Freedom, Samuel. Thank you. Samuel, you were born in Israel. You're, you're married to a woman who was also a individual who was a missionary at one time for Jews for Jesus and mm -hmm. became a plaintiff in the Jews for Jesus case, went all the way to the U.S. Supreme Court, established great precedent when they wouldn't allow her at the airport in Los Angeles to distribute literature. We started, uh, we talked before when you were on mm -hmm. Faith and Freedom about how someone like yourself, who's a Jewish believer, you were born in Israel, you're Jew mm -hmm. uh, by birth and, and by heritage, you also believe in Jesus as the Messiah. Uh, at the same time, you're living in, a, in an area of the world that is a hot spot, mm -hmm. both politically as well as um, with all the other uh, interests that are surrounding Israel. Uh, and yet you have strong faith that God is protecting Israel and the Jewish people. Yes. As I said in my previous interview, I really believe that Israel is the plan of God. And the return of the Jewish is the plan of God. We're living among people who really don't hate, uh, who really hate us. Mm. But I have a total peace that God will carry us through this all, if you can say, troubles of the Middle East. Uh, I re I believe that there's no easy solution for the problem in the Middle East. I don't believe that there is a solution, a mankind solution for the problem in the Middle East, if that's what you... Yeah, and I think, you know, one of the one of the issues that I think is very critical that I really began to understand more when I visited Israel, and I encourage you to come with us to Israel in May, May 18 through 27. You can go to ambassadorcouncil.org or lc.org to find out more information and sign up. But one of the things that became very clear to me, and I've been there now a number of times, is that the line of Western civilization, the dividing line between Western civilization and the rest of the world, literally runs through Israel. Mm -hmm. That our Judeo-Christian values are birthed in the land of Israel. Obviously, Jesus was a Jew. Mm -hmm. The scriptures were written by Jews, by and large. And all of that history and heritage began in that land with the Jewish people. And really, that's where the dividing line of, of history is, particularly our Judeo-Christian values. Mm -hmm. And so when we look at the news, and we see Israel in the news all the time, and all the conflicts that happen mm -hmm. in the Middle East, and Islam, and all of those radical um, ideologies arising, it really is, I think, a battle over the survival of Western civilization uh, and our values. And, that's, and Israel is right in the center of that. Yeah, I really believe it's a battle on the Judeo-Christian values. And uh, I believe that it's a battle that won't cease and won't be settled on a table of discussions because literally we're speaking two different languages. Mm -hmm. And to find a bridge between what we believe right and wrong is and what they believe right and wrong is, and I'm talking about the, the Arab Muslim world, is a very hard thing. We just don't speak the same language, and I think it's time that the world understand that we don't talk in the same language. Now, President Obama uh, actually had made a statement, I think it was in 2010, about uh, dividing Israel uh, back to the so-called 1967 borders. And he also, and a number of presidents, including George W. Bush, even talked about a two-state solution, where you'd have uh, Israel, uh, as part of the uh, state, and then you'd have the Palestine or the Palestinians as part of the other part of the state. Uh, and, and they would be basically, it, for anybody who hasn't looked at the geography, it's, it's not like you have 
uh, Florida and Georgia, mm-hmm. where you have two identifiable states yes. and you just draw a line between them. You actually have parts of, of Georgia inside of Florida is what you would have. Mm-hmm. So in other words, it would be what we – the best way to, I think, uh, understand this is be like the Indian reservations that are within the country. Mm-hmm. Well, if one of those countries was hostile to the other country, it makes a real problem. And that's what you have with the Palestinians. I think, first of all, if I may say, I don't believe that loving Israel is to hate the Palestinians. So I'm not here as a believer. I don't, I'm not here to, I don't hate anybody. I believe as a believer, I need to ha- love my enemies. But going back to the two-state solution, I don't believe it's a, it's, it's a solution. First of all, as you said, it's very, very hard to divide. Mm. Jerusalem is a very, very small city. Where do you draw, where do you draw the line? It's almost, it's almost impossible. And number two, because I believe it's a religious war, even if you divide, you'll have always one side who's not happy. I don't see any Jew that will be willing to give up the Temple Mount, and I don't see any Muslim that will be willing to give up uh, the Temple Mount. So where do you draw the line? What do you do with, the, with Jerusalem? Yes, you can div- draw a line in the Negev, in the southern part, part of Israel, right. but there are places that it's impossible to draw a line. And Jerusalem is an example. And, and Jerusalem is an example. What do you do? Cut a neighborhood? And another thing, even if you draw a line, let's say they sit and they draw and they make a two-state solution, I don't believe it's going to hold more than 10 years mm-hmm. because they want everything and they, the problem is that we don't listen to what they say and we don't believe what they claim. When you talk to the Palestinian leadership, when you hear Hamas, when you hear Hezbollah, they want everything. It's, they will never be satisfied with yeah. the 1967 borders. Yeah. Reminding you, we were in 1967 border and they started the war. It wasn't, it wasn't that we came and conquered the land because we had nothing else better to do. You know, and, and obviously, as you started, I want to reiterate, there, there's a number of Palestinians that are Christians. And there's a number of Palestinians and good that Christians. don't believe in the uh, Hamas and Hezbollah. They don't, mm-hmm. they don't follow that. They would actually, in fact, a poll shows that if there was a division between the uh, Palestinian state and the Israeli state, uh, many of them would want to be part of the Israeli mm-hmm. state because mm-hmm. they have more freedom there. But when we're looking at uh, the Palestinian issue as a political mm-hmm. ideology, which mm-hmm. includes the, the Hamas and the Hezbollah. Um, and you're looking at Israel. Where do you draw that line? If you draw the line right there and divide the Temple Mount in half, uh, it's just not going to work. Either one or one. If you put the Temple Mount in the Palestinian side, well, what's going to happen? Christians and Jews will not be able to visit that. And there's, be a, off limits. and there's another point, and you're, you're a lawyer. You know the moment you, de- you come up with a solution of two state and you give, a, you give them the, the pr- place of being a state, that means that they're allowed to have their own army, yeah. oh. their own airport. You can't even imagine that. And as a lawyer, you know, you know what it means. And we just cannot give them the opportunity to have their own army because they are not lovers of Israel. We're yeah. not talking about a fight between Switzerland and France. You have to understand, those are, we're talking about two nations that cannot go to, uh, along and, and, together. And one of those, the, the Palestinian uh, political ideology, does not recognize Israel's even right to, right exist. to exist. So exactly. maybe they would be okay with a two-state solution to begin with. Exactly. Only as a launching pad to exactly. the next level, which is the ultimate goal, and that's to wipe out Israel. And if we remember when Ehud Barak was the prime minister, and it gave Arafat 93% of the territory, mm. Arafat did not take the agreement. Arafat was very clear. He says, oh, I get 100% or I don't get anything. Yeah, yeah. So that shows you that in their mentality, they're not willing to give it's, up on anything. It's a zero-sum game for them. Exactly. Well, our guest is Samuel Smadja. Samuel uh, owns Sarel Company in Israel. And uh, other, uh, you've got the Galilee experience yes. also in Galilee. Uh, Samuel is uh, someone that you would meet when you come with us on our trip to Israel. Mm-hmm. We're having another trip with the Liberty Ambassador Council, and that will be May 18 through 27. We'll be leaving the United States for 10 days, literally 
this is a life-changing experience. Uh, you've heard about some people saying, well, they've gone there and the scriptures really do come alive. They do come alive. And in this particular tour with the Liberty Ambassador Council, not only will you see and visit all of those major biblical sites, but you also meet the Jewish people as well, different leaders mm -hmm. from different kinds of communities, the political leaders, the academic leaders, the uh, religious leaders. You're going to also meet military leaders, and it'll really come together for you in a way that you've never experienced it before. I would encourage you to go to ambassadorcouncil.org. That's ambassadorcouncil.org. Or you can go to Liberty Council's website, lc.org. That's lc.org. You have been listening to Faith and Freedom with Liberty Council. We hope that we have motivated you to stand up for your faith, family, and freedom. We can accomplish a lot when we work together. Get informed and get involved today. Sign up for our free monthly newsletter, The Liberator. We will send it out to you free of charge. Stay informed with our Liberty Alert email updates. Just click on the website at www.lc.org or call us at 1-800-671-1776. Tune in next time to learn more about your rights right here on Faith and Freedom.